Morning. Morning, folks. Glad to have you aboard. A wee second for the numbers to start climbing. I'm going to rattle through this today, folks. I feel I foolishly accepted a shift today, a favour for a friend and a van, and I find myself under pressure because I've got two or three runs running about Glasgow in it. So, um, eh, under a lot of pressure today. So, I'm just going to crack on with this. All right, so it's Indy Tuck Davy. Out eh, the house and in a van, broadcasting to you today from a cloudy Cumbernauld. All right, so let's move on. Coronavirus update, these are the figures for yesterday, the 23rd of the 2nd, 2021. Tested in Scotland since the pandemic reached our shores, 1,663,885, and that was plus 3,653 from Monday to Tuesday. Tested positive in Scotland since the pandemic reached our shores. Uh, 198,839 and that's plus 655 from Monday to Tuesday. That's new positive cases. In hospital, there is 1,070 COVID patients and that's doing 65. In the ICUs, or intensive care units, uh, there is 93 and that's doing 6. Vaccinated, there have been... 1,465,241 people vaccinated um, in Scotland so far, and that's plus 19,753 from Monday to Tuesday, and 43,203 have had both jags. All right, deaths. I'm sorry to report that the hospital death count has now broke the 7,000 barrier, and that brings a hospital death count to 7,006, and that was an additional 50 six deaths registered from Monday to Tuesday. Okay, community and hospital deaths combined remains at 9,053 until we get the national records of Scotland's update today. All right. AI, it's cloudy. Um, right, here we go. Tuesday's uh, news review. All right, Tuesday started with two big stories in the rags in Scotland. The so-called Scottish uh, publications went on the Salmon and Sturgeon saga and the English rags published in Scotland speculated on the First Minister's uh, route map out of lockdown. On the inquiry into the Scottish Government's mishandling of uh, harassment claims against Mr. St uh, Mr. Salmond, the... Bloody hell. Right, eh... Uh, the papers are full of the um, release of Mr Salmon's written uh, submissions to the inquiry. The other big story um, is speculation, as I say, speculation in the, the First Minister's who are locked in. Right, Tuesday, doing that road started with hapless Matt Hancock, the English Health Minister, appearing on Good Morning Britain to be interviewed by Piers Morgan. Morgan asked hapless Hancock, a hey, um, where are we, I, a um, Morgan asked Harpless Hancock if he would apologise for breaking the law by not uh, publishing details of contracts issued under the emergency COVID-19 legislation in England um, uh, on time, hence breaking the law. And Matt Hancock said no. He said he and his team should be applauded for its handling of the pandemic and for saving lives. Morgan was having none of it. None of it. He told a hapless Hancock of his mishandling of the pandemic, 120,000 dead, dodgy PPE, um, by the bucket load, while well, frontline workers died uh, because of PPE shortages. Hapless ha uh, Hancock denied it all. Piers Morgan was, uh, wasn't the only one to have a go at Hancock yesterday. Hancock uh, did a number of TV interviews and uh, radio interviews yesterday, and in them all, he denied that there would, was ever any PPE shortages in England, denied the dodgy contracts. And what was interesting was, in the Good Morning uh, Britain interview, which was probably the first one he did, Right next to him on the wall was a picture of his pal's pub. That was his pal that got a £30 million contract to make medical equipment. The guy's now under investigation by MHRA, the Medical Equipment Authority's licensing board. By the end of the interviews he did, by the time he was on the BBC, uh, the BBC was it? 
or was it Sky? That picture frame was empty. The picture of his pal's pub was gone. Anyway, so the theme of the morning for Mr. Harpless Hancock was to deny he, he and the government's failings on the handling of uh, the COVID pandemic down that road, right? Tuesday down that road, the Westminster Government Trade Bill um, for a post-Brexit trade um, is in the Lords. Hey. Where am I? Aye, down that road, the, the Government's Trade Bill uh, for post-Brexit trade in the UK as a and the Lords. Um, the Lords have a, a put an amendment to the bill, the trade bill, which requires a, um, the UK not to sign trade deals with anybody accused with genocide, any country accused of genocide, right? Lord Alton, um, a, a cross-party backbencher or independent, um, a, he took the lead on the debate uh, on the amendment uh, re genocide. Tory Trade Minister Lord Grimstone led uh, the debate against the amendment, OK? The amendment was passed by 367 votes to 214, a majority of 153. So the amendment was inserted into the Trade Bill, but we know fine well, because of Bojo's supermajority, when the Trade Bill goes back to um, the... When the... The trade bill goes back to eh, the Commons. They will strike down the amendment because who else is going to deal with Westminster except for dodgy regimes? Huh? Let's face it. They're accused of the standing accused of wanting to break international treaties, international finance law. They've eh, allowed the Secret Service and a eh, law enforcement officers in the UK to break the law. This is a party that breaks the law, right? So dealing with um, um, uh, regimes like Saudi Arabia and the um, in the past people at Pen Pinochet um, is what the Tories do. Because good nations, democratic nations, nations that take an interest in the well-being of their citizens don't deal with dodgy regimes. But the Tories will, especially post-Brexit, post because they're bloody well desperate. All right. Tuesday it's announced the... Um, that a press week airport, a, sorry, that jumped a story. Tuesday it's announced that America had passed the 500,000 deaths to COVID. A big number and tragic, but still a, um, a reasonably small a, amount of people in comparison to the UK a, and a stroke England. America has a population of 330 million. The UK has a population of 65 million. The UK has had 120,000 deaths. So, Hapless Hancock and Bojo are still world beaters, right? You know, they're right on that road about the UK being world beaten at this, world beaten at that. Well, the only thing they've been world beaten in this this pandemic is uh, the death rate. They have the highest death rate worldwide, which makes it doubly tragic because we live in a rock in the middle of the sea because they pulled up the drawbridges, because they landed the planes, and COVID would never a bloody well go here. All right, so... There you go, America passes 100,000, eh, 500,000 deaths, but still minuscule eh, per capita compared to the UK stroke England, right? Tuesday, back here in Scotland, lunchtime rolls around and the First Minister lays out her plans for the eh, slow lifting of COVID restrictions here in Scotland. All right. The lifting started on the 22nd of February with the early learning eh, and returning of a eh, um, primaries one to three to school and, of course, they allowing the two visitors per week to care homes, all right? Next will be the 15th of March with P4 to P7 returning to full-time learning with the rest of the school a, um, population moving to a blended learning um, model. Right, there will be um, a phase return of the university sector. Um, Non-contact sports for 12 to 17-year-olds to return. Four people from two households will be allowed to meet outdoors. Right, 5th of April will be the next major change, provided everything goes well. And on the 5th of April, um, a, the stay-home restrictions will be lifted, schools fully reopened, limited a, access to churches um, and a, um, for congregations, and click and collect to resume um, for stores. And six people from two households 
will be allowed to meet outdoors. Right, next up with the 26th of February, I'm uh, sorry, 26th of April, um, a, a return to the tiered COVID systems here in Scotland, with the hope that all of Scotland moving into level three, non-essential retail pubs and restaurants to reopen, gyms, swimming pools and other leisure activities to return. All of the dates are uh, dependent on the transmission rate or the R, R number as it's called and the continued rollout of the vaccine, right? Tory leader um, Dross, Douglas Ross, took to social media to, mad, to demand to know when he could cuddle his mammy. Never mind people's lives. Douglas Ross wants a definite date so that he can cuddle his mammy. And he repeated the same bloody thing on uh, GMS Radio Scotland this morning, right? Um, uh, meanwhile, his Holyrood leader, Ruthie Tank Commander, said that a, um, the statement fell short of public expectation. Um, a, but what do you mean it fell short of public expectation? The public didn't have any bloody expectations. We were expecting it to go even slower than that. Some people were actually thinking that this might be a wee bit too quick. But hey-ho, right. Scottish Labour interim leader, one brain cell Bailey, said the statement lacked clarity and it's a um, ultimate goal. Davy says, hey, brain one, brain cell Bailey, you want clarity? Go and have a wee word with the COVID virus, see what its intentions are, you bloody idiot. Scottish Greens and, uh, the Scottish Greens and Lib Dems raised concerns that vaccine passports to be introduced. Um, and Davy says, we've had vaccine passports for years. You've got to get JAGs to go to certain parts of the world and it's got, you've got to have the paperwork to go with it, like a uh, um, malaria um, a vaccination and things like that. So vaccine passports are no bloody new at all. Right, Tuesday, severe weather battered Scotland with disruption to travel uh, as the winds uh, were very, very high. Um, uh, the worst disruption was in the east, we affect in the Fourth Road Bridge and in Edinburgh on Iona Street, a roof blew off a tenement. Wow, fortunately nobody was hurt. Right, um, the weather warning stayed in place to six o'clock this morning, but I'm out in the road in the curtain cider. I can assure you, it's bloody windy. All right, Tuesday, Transport Minister Michael Matheson's announced a preferred bidder to buy Presswick Airport. Um, now, the airport was uh, nationalised a, a good few years back as an important piece of infrastructure and the Scottish Government paid for a pound for it. In that time, the Scottish Government has had to plough in £43 million, but it has now returned the airport to making a profit where it made a profit of £3 million in 2019-2020. So it's an important piece of infrastructure. It's up for sale. Right, the bidder's not been identified but it is believed to be a European infrastructure management company. Okay, so it's a European company that's in for it, right? Um, Tuesday, after a, an intervention from the Crown Office, read the publication of Mr Salmon's written submission to the committee um, investigating the mishandling of a harassment claim, a complaints against Mr Salmon. Um, a, has the committee take down the written... A, a take down the published written submissions uh, that Mr Salmon had made to the committee. All right. Now, Mr Salmon wasn't the best chuffed. Maesties had a chance to read them anyway, and they, were, they, were, they weren't even relevant to the remit of the committee. I keep saying this. The committee's remit is, remit is very, very narrow. The committee's remit is to find out what went wrong with human resources procedures in the case uh, cases against Mr. Salmon. That's it. That's all there is. This he he said she said push, which was submitted by Mr. Salmon, is irrelevant to this inquiry, right? Sideshow. Opposition parties are having a field day, um, a, and the forlorn hope that this will uh, derail the SNP majority in May. And uh, sorry, and I and May. Now, um, Dross Douglas Ross went as far as to smear the Scottish Government and the Lord Ad Advocate. Uh, he may come to regret that, uh, you know, because uh, if the Lord Ad Advocate or the Scottish Government decide to have a go with Ross and sue him, he could be in big trouble. He once again repeated the same things on Good Morning Scotland this morning on BBC Radio Scotland. Not just smearing the Scottish Government, but accusing the Lord Advocate of being 
complicit in a cover up against a of conspiracy of a conspiracy against Mr. Salmond. I don't think Douglas Ross is going to make it to the May's election at the way he's gone, because if the Lord Advocate takes his hump at what he hears on the radio this morning, Mr. Ross could find himself in court. Okay. Right. Right. As I say, I don't really have a um, time to go. I'm going to skip a couple of articles today, folks. I'm really are up against it here, right? Moving on to this morning, what the papers have to say. The Herald goes on, outcry over Sturgeon's too cautious lockdown exit plan. You've never heard so much passion all your life. An outcry. The only people that are up in arms is a, um, a leisure and hospitality. And you know what? Stuff them. You know, Masty is watching this right now. Out of the 271 he's 274 he's new. Well, I've lost a friend or a family member to this. And as you all know, it's pretty raw to the bloody bone for me. And these buggers are worried about their bloody wallets and steady public health. Ah, oh, don't have no going to get gone on it, all right? Um, the time goes on. Critics turn on Sturgeon's route map caution. Not they bloody well, have they? Public health is more important than these buggers' pockets. Any day of the week. The Looney Paper, the Express, goes on. Uh, Sturgeon's exit plan offers no hope. Well, Davy says, go and speak to the bloody virus, you nut jobs. Can he take risk with people's lives? As I say, believe me, I've lost five friends and one, uh, four friends and one relative to this so far. It's bloody sore. And the one relative I lost, we lost because of reopening up at Christmas. The Metro goes on. Road map to nowhere. What a lot of bollocks. Why don't these papers get their reporters to go out and try and interview the COVID-19 virus? Nobody knows how it's going to mutate. Nobody knows how the infection rate's going to go. Nobody even knows if the vaccine stops transmission from people to people. So even if you've been vaccinated and you're no longer feeling the effects of COVID-19, there's every chance you're still bloody transmitting it to people who haven't had the vaccine. Jesus Christ. Where is the quality of reporting gone? Where is the objectiveness in the press gone? Where is the interest in human life over economics gone? Christ Almighty, is that where we've come to? Where life is cheap, so cheap they want to open up and kill a 100,000 bloody people because that's what that idiot doing the road's going to do. Um, the eye goes on, six more, six more weeks at home and that's going to do with kids. There'll be six more weeks of four there in full-time education. All right, they're moving to a blended learning model. The Scotsman goes on, holiday bookings cancelled amid lockdown muddle. It's no a bloody muddle. Nobody can tell what this bloody vaccine's going to do. So the FM's doing what the FM's done all the time. And that has put public people's lives before the public purse. Or before the economy. And before the leisure and a tourism industry's pockets. The sun goes on, Lennon on way out. Fat boss story, apparently Celtic managers resigned. The record goes on, Salmon inquiry shambles, and I have to agree with the record, but not for the reasons in its headlines. It is a shambles. Linda Fabiani has should have the grip of this bloody committee and had the grip of Alex Cole Hamilton, had the grip of Juan Cell ba Brain Cell Bailey and had the grip of Murdo the FUD because the questions being asked have nothing to do with a bloody remit of the committee. The remit of the committee is to get the bloody head civil servant and her underlings dragged before that parliament and find out why the drafting, the redrafting of this legislation had went so bloody law wrong. Right, the fail, um, eh, the daily fail goes on, a eh, stench of cover-up, wow, you can see them getting bloody done by the Lord Advocate and all. The National goes on, Tory Leaflet, SMP, eh, Tory Leaflet says SM, SMP majority will give you in their F2. So there we have it, folks. And the literature being sent out to people's homes by the Conservative Party, they're telling people that they can, they're the only ones that can stop uh, the SNP getting a majority and stop in their F2. That's an admission that if we get an SNP majority, there will be in their F2. All right. Um, and the star goes on. 
Tiger's Terror, right, apparently Tiger Woods um, was involved in a car crash, folks, all right, I really don't have time to mess about here, folks, I don't have time for a chat, so we're going to run through the, the public uh, service message and then on to the public health message, right, public service message, the campaign's afoot, Tory leaflets tell us that, all right, support the alternative media, broadcasting Scotland, Independence Live, and the radio, Caledon Radio, Independence Bloggers, iScot Magazine, the National Newspaper, join a local Yes group, if there is no one, create one, all right, now on to the public health messages, facts, okay, face coverings and enclosed public spaces, all right, avoid large gatherings, clean hands and surfaces regularly, um, two metres social distancing when you're out and about, and if you need a test, book one, all right. Now look after each other. I'll be back tomorrow. I'll be in a truck tomorrow. So it'll be in the truck. They'll be in the truck tomorrow. Have a nice day. Look after each other. Take care.